Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Monday, February 13th meeting of the Conway Select Board and the Conway Finance Committee. Call the meeting to order. First, my item on the agenda the minutes of February 6th, 2023. Mr. Mulder, they look good. They look good to me, too. <clears throat> Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Um, skip the, um, skip. All in favor, sorry. Yes. Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you. Um, we can skip the warrants and since we do have we do have both the quorum of the finance committee and we have Meg Ryan and um uh, from from FERCOT here. To talk about age and dementia friendly initiatives, as well as members of the family. Oh, ah. Oh. Thank you. So, 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 I mean, on the agenda is the Board of Health, is the, is the uh, Finance Committee first. Mm -hmm. but, What's that? Yeah, this is a scheduled presentation from from the mm -hmm. of information for town residents at large. An interesting stuff, actually. So, um, no, go on. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, if it's okay, if it's okay with the rest of the select board to move an item up in the agenda and. Listen to Carol Foote and Meg Ryan from Burkhag. And... Thank you very much. We're really happy to be here and thank you so much for your time tonight. I'm Meg Ryan. I'm one of the two public health nurses for Conway through the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And this is Carol Foote. I'm Carol Foote from Lifetown. I'm the age uh, friendly project manager for Lifetown and the region. So we're here tonight to do a brief review of what the age and dementia friendly movement is um, and go over the data that we collected last year from the needs assessment survey um, that was done. Um, uh, Conley was an early adopter of the age and dementia friendly movement. Um, the age friendly movement started with the World Health Organization about 20 years ago as a worldwide movement. And in the US, it's run by the AARP, and it's in response to a rapidly aging worldwide population, um, which is especially true here in Massachusetts, and even more true in Franklin County than it is in Massachusetts. Um, by 2030, in seven short years, 34% of Franklin County is going to be age 65 or older. And around the same time, there will be more people over 65 than under 18 for the first time in history. In Conway, as of 2018 data from the Healthy Aging Collaborative, over 28% of the population was over 65 years ago already. Um, at that point, the total population of, of Conway was, uh, of residents age 65 and older was, I have this right, 1,783? Okay. All right. So in response to this rapidly aging population, LifePath, which is the lead agency for the age-friendly movement, initiated age and dementia-friendly Franklin County in North Clawson, kicked it off in 2020. Um, uh, if we could get the PowerPoint up, Veronique, that would be great. Um, we, uh, the first year there was a steering committee that met. Um, uh, sounds were signed up. Last year, a region-wide assessment of the area oh, needs was sorry. completed. Hold on, sorry. I just That's realized okay. I did that without sharing. So, um. oh. <laughs> um, and there are currently four regional work groups. If we go to the second uh, slide. Thanks. There are currently four regional work groups analyzing that data to identify the issues that were noted by the people responding to the survey and to set priorities. Um, then the regional steering committee is going to look at those priority issues and formulate a regional response and action plan. 
And each community is going to have a chance to review the data individually. Um, and that's why we're here tonight. And either create your own action plan or contribute to a region-wide one. So and then we would implement the action plans and going forward, continually evaluate it. Um, so any questions yet? The next slide, please. The uh, or, movement is organized around eight domains of livability. Um, Three are related to the built environment, such as transportation and roads, housing and outdoor spaces and public buildings. The other five are related to the social environment. So communication, civic and social participation, health services and community support, and social inclusion and respect. These are all the topics that need to be, uh, that older people need to be fully able to engage in to leave, uh, live a full and healthy, happy life. So the work groups looking at the data right now are organized along these domains. There are four of them. One's looking at transportation, one at healthcare and community support, one at housing, one at outdoor spaces and public buildings, and one at social and civic and engagement, inclusion and respect. Um, this is a map of the enrollment status of the Franklin County and North Quabbin region um, towns in the age-friendly movement, the blue stars are officially enrolled. The yellow stars have sent letters of intent, but we have not yet completed the application for them. So just to give you a sense, there's very few towns that are not fully enrolled. Um, we made sure that all towns participated in the needs assessment survey, whether they were officially enrolled or not, to try to get as big, a, uh, as complete a picture of Franklin County as possible. And I'll just add to, to this picture that these 30 towns were chosen because with LifePath being the um, you know, primary recipient of the, the grant money, this represents LifePath service area. So it's the 26 towns in um, Franklin County and four in the North area is what is considered the region. So next slide, we're going to spend the rest of the time just giving you a brief overview of the survey data. Um, throughout the slides, the region-wide info is given first in black, and the town-specific info, i.e. Conway's info, is listed second in the red parentheses. Um, in the handouts, we've also brought the all the questions for the uh, needs assessment survey um, with both the regional responses and Conway's response to each question. Um, and on that, those red bar graphs, there's a black dot in on that um, Excel spreadsheet and that black dot represents the regional answer. So just to, to let you know what you're looking for, looking at. Um, next. So the demographics of the survey respondents, and I just want to say a, a thing about the survey that, you know, we tried to get it out as widely as possible. Is this a complete representation of Franklin County? No, it's not, but it's the best we could do. And it's it's uh, it's pretty wide. We got uh, almost 2000 responses when we were aiming for a thousand. So we're pretty pleased with that. Um, Conway had, uh, 43 respondents to the survey. So when I talk about Con Conway's response, it is not the entire town of Conway. It's the response from those 43 people that filled out the survey. It was distributed in paper and online. So, um, so the demographics to respond to the survey, um, region-wide 72% were female, 25% were male. In Conway, it was a, a little higher for female at 76%. About 25% live alone and 56% with a spouse or partner. Um, most people who responded were between the ages of 60 and 79, and we uh, uh, tried to get the survey out to people 50 and older. Um, so it was 72% between 60 and 79 region-wide and 70% Conway, so very close. Um, there were more 80-year-olds and up in Conway at 21% than regionally. Um, 
So pretty close. So next slide, we're going to talk about the built environment, as in housing, public buildings, and outdoor spaces, and transportation. Um, in this presentation, we're trying hard not to draw conclusions about what the data means, but just tell you what the survey found. Um, and I'm not going to cover the material on each slide thoroughly, um, uh, just because of time constraints. Instead, we're going to be highlighting some of the major differences between the regional responses and the town's responses. You have these slides and the complete town data to look at in the future. If anybody online would like those, I'm sure that Veronique would be happy to send them if you just request them. Um, I can post them online as well. Great. That'd be great. Um, so housing, next slide. 47% of respondents regionally own their own home, 58% in Conway. So that's uh, higher. And in Conway, um, 77 people have lived in town for over 15 years versus 67% regionally. And 75% of the respondents in Conway have lived in that home for 15 years or more. So you've got a lot of longevity here. Over 90% of the Conway respondents said it was important to stay in Conway and in their current home as they age. We asked about possible motivations for changing housing in the future. And the top motivations uh, for changing uh, people guessed would be housing and cost and the need for a different um, type of housing. So 60% for cost and 50% for a need for different type of housing. That's a little higher in both time places than the uh, regional. And the others were the need to be closer to family and social opportunities um, at around 29%. So we'll also share about that kind of question as they come up, that it was a check all that apply. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if the percentages look a little screwy, it's because people can choose more than one. <laughs> yeah, there were some questions that um, you could do either or only have one response, but a lot of them were check all that apply. Um, almost nothing adds up to 100% because some people skipped questions. The only two questions we had that were mandatory were your town of residence and your age. So thank you. <laughs> um, more people in Conway felt they had good access to home repair services than regionally. Uh, 72% in Conway versus under 60% regionally. And lawn care service access was rated at about 50% here and regionally. I love hearing the little chuckle because as you're looking through this data or hearing, you know, as we say, as you're looking at it, there will be things that occur to you that make sense. You know, the <laughs> point to, yeah, that definitely happens here in Conway. We, it totally resonates with us. And then there are the other things that you might say, oh, that's something we need to think about a little bit more. You know, so you're already watching out for those things, but those are fun for us to watch you respond to. <laughs> and, and some of the responses are, are um, may not uh, tally with your particular experience of either the region or Conway. Remember, it's a very small sampling here, 43 people. So in outdoor spaces and buildings, it's notable that um, in for Conway, that fewer respondents thought traffic signs and pedestrian crossings were good in Conway. Only 48% found them good versus almost 70% regionally. 45% of the Conway respondents reported a need for better lit and accessible streets and roads. Um, and slightly more people felt access to public buildings was good at 83% for the Conway respondents versus 77% regionally. Um, one question asked if you feel safe and the, the responses were always sometimes and never. Um, Regionally, 81% of respondents reported feeling safe in their home and community. It's a little bit higher in Conway with 85% always feeling safe. Um, 
I like to flip that around. It does mean that 15% of Conway respondents do not always feel safe in their home or community. Um, we've dug into that data a little bit more and the people who aren't feeling safe are a little more isolated um, in some ways than uh, those who do feel safe. They tend to live alone, um, et cetera. Transportation. There's no surprises in the transportation category. Um, we asked about how people get around. 95% of Conway residents get around by driving themselves. Um, far fewer than regionally walk or bike to actually get places rather than for recreation. And no surprise, 96% report there is no public transportation. Um, regionally, tr access to transportation was the number one issue mentioned in the open response questions where people could write whatever they wanted. Um, uh, so that's, that's an interesting thing. So we're going to move on to social environments. And I know I'm rushing through all of this. Uh, so thanks for listening fast. Um, so next slide. Health supports and community health services and community supports in the next slide. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so responses to questions about uh, receiving caregiving and being a caregiver were similar to the regional responses. Um, well, 13% regionally and 7% in Conway report receiving caregiving. And that was the biggest difference. 5% um, are primary caregivers of children, 10% are primary giver, caregivers for an older adult. Around 20% both in Conway and regionally report ac adequate access to caregiver support such as respite care and support groups. Um, that's not a very big number. There could be a need there. Um, and 20, five-ish percentage points, both regionally and in Conway, say that access to home health care providers is poor or unavailable. Um, that's a nationwide crisis. It's, it's Massachusetts, regionally, Conway. Um, it's usually more exacerbated in more remote towns and areas. So, um, other health services. 30% of respondents in Conway say access to healthcare professionals is poor, unavailable, or they don't know, which is just under the regional of 34%. 45% um, of respondents in Conway say health and social services are not conveniently located or they don't know, which is a little bit higher than the regional of 37%. And, uh, only 30% of Conway respondents report access to wellness programs such as nutrition, pain management, et cetera, versus 43% in the region. Um, it makes sense that people near the Y and Greenfield may feel they have more access. Um, I wanna remind people here, just put a plug in, Lisa and I are, Lisa or I are here in town hall every first Friday from nine to 12 to provide, um, uh, support about wellness issues. We can help you find a resource if you're not yet, and we can always check your blood pressure. Which may include Lake Pass Healthy Living Program. Yes, it would. <laughs> Which many of those programs are available online. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was our the commercial portion of our presentation. <laughs> um, um, we asked some questions about village or neighbor to neighbor support groups. Those are some formal networks of uh, towns that choose to create a neighbor to neighbor support group in their town um, that can provide resources or a neighbor can come over and help you change that light bulb, that sort of thing. Um, I don't believe you have one here in Conway, is that true? We have a whole town full of them. Yep, <laughs> excellent. 54% um, of Conway respondents are interested in volunteering in that sort of support uh, versus 44% regionally. So you got a helpful bunch of people. Um, and 38% are interested in receiving support from such a group. 
versus 31% regionally. Um, good access to information about services uh, was less than 50% both in Conway and regionally. So there could be definitely some work to do about getting information about what resources and services exist out to people. Um, we talked about telehealth. I was surprised to see that most people in the region have used telehealth at least once, once and almost 60% more than once. It's a little lower than that for the Conway respondents. 61% have used telehealth at least once and under 50% more than once. Of those who have used telehealth at all, most had a good experience around 70 or 74%. Um, most around 60% would prefer to see their provider in person. Um, most found that the technology was not confusing to use and that was 100% of the respondents in, in Conway. And um, 85 to 95% would choose to use it again, even after pandemic. Um, so it's, it's an option that I think the pandemic opened up for us, um, but not anybody's, not many people's first choice for saving for provider. Social participation. There are generally similar responses in Conway and regionally to the questions regarding social participation. Over three quarters interact with someone outside their household several times per week or more. 10% um, though, interact with someone outside of their household less than twice per month. Um, and I, I, we also asked a question, uh, do you have someone you could call for help any time of day or night? Um, and uh, regionally, 20% said they do not have or are unsure if they have someone they could call any time of day or night. In Conway, it was higher than that at 25% of those respondents. Um, and I, I think it's worth underscoring that question as well, because I think it also speaks to levels of isolation. Um, one in four is pretty high. Not that you're that far out of line with anybody else in the region. So. Communication and information. You guys scored extremely well with the use of the town newsletter, much better than the regional average, <coughs> excuse me. Um, your town newsletter is used by 65% of the Conway respondents for the source of information versus 27% regionally. So I don't know who writes that, but congratulations. Social media and internet are used as a, um, source of information by more people in Conway. It's about 54% regionally and 63% in Conway. And information from the Council on Aging is lower than the region at 37% versus 52%. Um, but that makes sense. I don't believe you guys have any kind of daily drop-in senior center that would cause, you know, be a source of information, so. Um, and computer use and internet access is fairly similar to the regional response with more Conway respondents having a device and knowing how to use them. And we'll also say that this was distributed uh, by electronic, you know, um, means um, in a greater percentage than the paper. I should say we got more electronic res responses than, you know, the paper responses. So that all makes sense when you know that. Yeah. And um, I think it was around 75% were electronic responses-ish. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Civic participation and employment. Just over half of respondents felt they had good volunteer opportunities. A higher percentage of Conway respondents felt they had good opportunity for civic engagement, 73% here versus 57% regionally. And I would say that's borne out with the number of people who are attending this meeting. Um, much higher rating for access to information about town updates here with 
88% of the Conway respondents saying it's, it's good or excellent versus 69% regionally. Which might be that newsletter again. Yep. <laughs> um, <clears throat> more people felt that remote um, engagement opportunities and flexible employment opportunities were poor. 90 per, not in the 90s for percentages for Conway compared to the 80s regionally for those two things. We asked questions about um, financial insecurity. Uh, more people felt okay now financially uh, in Conway, 56% versus 43%. But similar numbers report financial insecurity as their biggest problem or worry about getting by each month, <laughs> around 25, almost 25% both regionally and in Conway. Respect and social inclusion. Few Conway respondents feel they have conveniently located social or cultural activities, 40% compared to 54% regionally. Otherwise, access to events was very similar for affordable events. Mm -hmm. um, there was poor access to intergenerational events, uh, the access to good, good access to fitness and outdoor recreation opportunities was around 65%. Um, I really like the quote from the focus group on this page. I don't want to be separated out as I get older. I want to live with all kinds of kinds and ages of people. Mm -hmm. um, and then the summation question, how do you rate your town as a place to age? I've been really struck by the answers to this question. It's about half and half regionally. The blue is good or excellent, and the reddish is fair or poor. Um, in Conway, only 35% of respondents rated Conway as good or excellent, um, versus, and 65% uh, said it was fair or poor. I feel strongly it's not a reflection on the worth of Conway or our towns or the region in general. It's it, And it's not necessarily an indication of how much people like this area. It tells me that this age and dementia friendly work is really needed and will be appreciated. So anything we can do, no matter how small, to help push us towards being more age and dementia friendly would be great. You know, there's a range of things we can do. Um, the next slide is just a brief thing about health equity. Um, 11 of the Franklin County towns who were involved with the agent dementia friendly work signed up to participate in a separate grant to support it um, through Mass in Motion, which is a state Department of Public Health grant to um, <clears throat> improve access to healthy food and opportunities to move in order to support better health. Conway did not sign on to that, but the mass in motion towns are required to consider health equity and how it affects decisions being made. I bring it up because there, I, I think these racial justice reframing questions are worth thinking about as you make, make decisions, who benefits, who is harmed, who influences, who decides, and what are the unintended consequences. And I just wanted to let you know that there will be a health equity training funded by mass in motion that everyone is Welcome to sign up for. I brought some flyers. Um, it's on Tuesday, February 21st from 9.30 to 3.30 in Greenfield at the Transit Center. So if you're interested, um, feel free to sign up. If you have questions, let me know. And then uh, as we move toward the end here, um, we, we uh, provided a few Practical and inexpensive age and dementia friendly examples for each of the eight domains. Um, and some of them are pretty low resource and money, for instance, under transportation. Just make sure people know of the existing resources. Um, for uh, social inclusion and respect, think about establishing some kind of buddy system to encourage intergenerational interaction and appreciation, something between um, the, the, the grammar school and, and older adults. So there's, there's all kinds of things, some of which you're already doing. You know, every town is already doing some age-friendly stuff. Our example here is 
use your town newsletter to share information on age specific resources and supports. You're doing that. So, any questions for myself or for Carol? Did I talk to you? Did I talk to you? I just let you. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> Um, and our our uh, contact information is on that PowerPoint um, that will be posted on the town website. Uh, if anybody wants to be in touch with us more, it's also on the last page of the handout. Does anybody have any questions for well, thank you all so much for your time. Thank I, you. I hope you found the information interesting. Um, and, and, you know, there will be more information coming out about what the work groups are doing with the survey data in those four different groups that they're working in. Um, and then the steering committee will be putting um, the, those recommendations into priorities for the region that each town, you know, may decide to join in and collaborate on or you may decide to take on your own projects or take a pause. Um, but, you know, it is a time that there is lots of activity around, you know, making our communities more age-friendly. Um, and as we can see, you know, the timing is great to move forward with um, making some changes, even if it's just the way we plan for things or think about things, um, because we're all getting on. That yeah. is true. <laughs> <laughs> and wiser. What's the thing on the first? The health equity trade. I have a flyer to that. Breakfast and lunch are provided. Yeah, free. And you get two bottles. <laughs> Yeah. And, and if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, a lot of this work does um, come out of volunteer um, activity. And so, you know, is there a work group that is that gets started in Conway or is there, you know, the Council on Aging, or is there the ability to take on, you know, a project? Um, that's what it kind of looks like to us that moving forward with um, a volunteer body to I'm sorry. I don't feel like Oh, sure. They need one more. Thank you. That's what I really something <laughs> So about ready to convene the joint meeting with the finance committee. Um, we'll call your yeah. Meeting. I second motion to call the finance committee joint to hold the select board to order. Okay. Second. Thank you. And um, since we have the board of health co-chair, we um, go ahead and board of health. Budget. Yes, absolutely. Well, I thought Pat was going to say something. Oh, oh, she's on. Um, no, I don't think she's there. She's there. She's there. Yeah. She went. I think she went away. She left. Well, great. Well, I like that. Please. Well, Carol, I'm not here. She's a great person. 
So we have Board of Health Chair Kathy Lamas here with us. Yeah. Lori Lucio. And I think everybody has in their packet the, the budget. Mm -hmm. So normally we just go through line by line and you know see if there's if there's any changes or very little. Very little, very, right? Very little. Yeah. Yeah. So the stipend went up like a minimal amount, right? Yeah, but to balance it off, my hourly went down. Right. So so it looks like mileage stayed the same, postage the same, dues the same. Tuition and meetings the same. Contracted went up by. I'm well. I'm I'm kind of estimating because we don't know what per cost to come with the contract. But you know, we just don't know if it might fall. Right. So I'm right. Probably I did the same thing. Right. I just budget. rounded it up yeah. to the yeah five hundred. Yeah, it might be a little more. I know I put in. A, I think I put in a placeholder of like. Five or six percent, just because we, like you said, we don't know yet. Right, and I didn't even go that much. I just rounded it up to the nearest five hundred and keep my fingers crossed. So what am I missing on the dues? Because it, it's like it went from eleven thousand to one thousand. No, that eleven thousand is definitely. Oh wow, it's eleven thousand. Wow. Oh, you know because um because it was part of the transfer. It used to be part of the transfer. Oh, that's right. right. So right. now it's just for the health. So the dues are a little lower. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that's why the total salaries went down from 21. For the clerical, I dropped. I I dropped my clerical because I don't put in as many hours as the previous clerk did. No. So I just lowered the end amount by I think five hundred dollars. And the only other changes I see is you took down the other supplies I did. by a thousand and the vector born by like 200. Vector born, yeah, about 200. So. And the whole budget. What are you talking about? The vector born is the mosquito testing? No, the vector born is the rabies testing. And we've already used 50% of the budget this year so far. So it's, it's, it's 250 minimum a pop for each test. And there's a lot of bats out there, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of bat contact. Yeah. And small animals and rodents and dog bites. So any head we have to send out to be tested is a minimum of 250. <laughs> you ask. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I had to throw in the detail about the back head. So yeah, but it's not just it wasn't it's that not necessary just, to answer just, my question. It's not just bats. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not just bats. It could be, it could be a coyote or a or cat. Or no. You know, I have delicate sensibilities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but overall, I was going to say the budget did go down a few hundred. Yeah. Lori yeah. yeah. and, and John, have you any further questions? No further questions from me. What's the impact of Burkhardt's in increase on your budget? It, we don't know what it's going to be yet, so I just rounded it up. It was 11042 this year, so I just rounded it up to 11500 and praying that it falls within there. I think it's going to be With higher. It. I'll be honest. It'll it probably be a little bit higher. Yeah. But some of the programs that actually got additional grant money and whatever it's, um, but they are they, they are seeing ten thousand so five percent whatever. So right. Well, I mean, even five percent is 
$550. So that was pretty close. I guess I still need the third one. I get the percent. I mean, I'm happy to up that to twelve thousand and cover it just in case. I mean, it's not, it doesn't get used; it's not going anywhere else. Yeah, but I, exactly. We got, a, we got a reason to assess it, though. It assess pretty. Um. Mm -hmm. You're, you are. We are going to hear. And we are going to hear. We are going to hear their their finite numbers in, right. within just a couple of weeks. So. Yep. Yeah. We're not going to be voting on it, so yeah, we can keep it the way it is, and then if you need, right? Um, and Kat said she thought she uh, heard four percent. Sure I heard something in that window. Okay, this, I this just put in eight percent, so I can take it down to, or sorry, six percent. I can do four and see, and that's less than what she had. So, so if you leave it as it is, then we should be good. We should be okay, okay. unless they up it by eight percent. I don't think because people were thinking about. Or concerned about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so in our, our, that is, is all of that per cog. That's the per cog line item, the contracted services, or is there other additional vendors? Or, right? No, that's just for that. Yeah, there that's are the only the other help. vendor we have is Carl, but Carl, right, right. that you know how his so, works. So the money that, that comes in for the Title V just rolls out. Is that, that um so that's that so, so for that per cog is doing the uh, food inspections, food inspections. camp inspections, pool inspections. They're doing all inspections except Title V. Yeah. And there we, and some wonder and some wonderful assistance and service when we need, you know, when we need to talk to somebody, they're a necessary resource and very helpful. Yeah. We, did, we did the math on the animal control officer, and basically, as soon as you go to the regional services like that, your cost for that service triples. Yes, yeah, it does. And okay. Anybody else on Board of Health? No, thank, you. thank you for thank you. Thank you for the almost level of the even better than level. I tried. Yes, you do, actually. It won't be that easy next week. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can folks hear me? Yes, yeah. hi. So hey, we hey. Pull, pull up the IT. Oh, there it is. Yeah. You ready, you ready for Roy in the IT budget? Well, before we start that, Veronique, you can bring that 14.5 back down to 14,000. I took another hard look at things today. You might even be able to make that 13.5. As long as you keep um, uh, the, okay. Uh, as long as you keep the uh, the new web services as part of the software, and, you know, and subscriptions, and you don't back it out of there. Okay, which do you want, Roy? Then the thirteen five or fourteen? Um, you can make it thirteen five. Now, wait, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Make it fourteen, and make the other one twenty eight five. That'll 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 be more accurate. Okay, so. Let me just uh, explain, uh, if I can, and I'm going to just pull up my spreadsheet here that you can't see, um, and okay. So in that software and subscriptions, okay. Do you want to be able to share it, Roy? Um, maybe I could just paste it somewhere, if Wait, that makes you, sense. I can let you share a screen if you want to show your spreadsheet. That um uh, sure if you want yeah okay so do i ha i have to click the uh, share screen button probably right yep. somewhere here let's see all right share should be screen. in the bottom middle in green yeah, yeah but yeah i want a different uh 
this is not going to work with my setup. Well, let me just uh, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to, I can just talk about it because it's not that complicated. Um, so look, uh, there's at the current rate, okay, Comcast is 8,700 per year. And that is part of it. And that's going to go up. Comcast has nothing is Comcast is nothing if if they're not an annual price increase entity. And it's just, you know, but th this is what our latest monthly is $725 annualized out times 12 is 8,700. So Veronique, you could just put that in a in a cell there somewhere if you like just so people can get an idea of where the costs are spread out. Veronique, yes? Yeah, I'm, I'm typing it in now? Yeah, no, I'm saying uh, you could just put that in there. Um, uh, I'm not sure what you mean. As a note, or do you want me to put it in? No, just in a temporary, just so folks can see what I'm, ta what I'm talking about. But why have I, why have I lost... The meeting here that's not great i wonder can you hear us we can hear you okay just bear with me if you will uh post attendee yeah the damn the meeting dropped here let me let me just see if i can get myself back in uh, oh there you are sorry okay all right. So yeah, okay. Comcast 8700 and that's guaranteed to go up. I I guarantee it'll go up 500 bucks over the uh over the 12 12 months we're talking about. And then we have Microsoft. And this is Microsoft Office and Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Email. Um and this includes of course Word, Excel, uh Outlook, those are the primary ones. And those are currently running at 3,900 annual. And they are increasing prices somewhere on the order of 5% a year. So, you know, that's, so that's 3,900. Uh, another category is security. And that includes crypto, specifically crypto security, as well as other security. And that is currently uh, running or will be running at uh, about 7,000 annualized. Do you like the price jumps too, Roy? What's that, uh, Tom? The security outfits, they, they, after the, they do the price increases like Comcast and, and Microsoft? Uh, th this is this reflects basically just a number of products uh, that that uh, help enforce security. Is that yeah, answer? I wonder, does this outfit gal do they jack the prices up like you described the other two? Are they as aggressive on their cost increases? Are they going to have cost increases? Yeah, they do, yeah, but I. They as aggressive as the first two you mentioned. Okay. Um, well, gas and Microsoft. Yeah, that, well, okay. So Microsoft, yes. Micro, so, Veronique, why don't you just put the, Veronique, could you just put the 8,700 in the, in, a, in the cell that's highlighted? Okay, I mean, it's here. Where do you, where do you want it? Oh, right? just put it in the next cell so we can add it. Oh, okay. Oh, you want to use it? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Then put down Microsoft in the next one. 900. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay, sorry to make you do my work here. <laughs> put down Microsoft that it's, uh, okay. So next to Microsoft, you can put, uh, it's 3,900 times, one, it's actually times, it will be times 1.05 by the time the year is out. So you, you could just, yeah, put a little formula in there. Okay, and then we have the crypto security, which is duo, sec duo security, um, which is, um, let me get back to this. Um, 
what did I say? Uh, uh, Dural security, a thing called Crypto Stopper that is supposed to stop ransomware dead in its tracks. And that's going to, it's 135 monthly, and that's going to wind up being 1,620 annualized. Now, which one is that's the crypto? Because you, didn't crypto, you say that it was seven? Crypto security. I thought you said that was 7,000. Well, no, then you add other security in there. Mail oh, Assure, okay. uh, a bunch of other things, uh, Sentinel One. This was specific to the crypto world. I, I broke it out just so, because I know maybe there's some grants coming in that direction. Um, and then other security, $444 a month, annualized out is $5,328. Let's see what that's looking like. So what was the crypto again? Okay. And then we we have another category here, uh, one last category that hasn't been mentioned much in the past, but it's something that I subscribe to and really should be brought forward along with uh, enhanced crypto, and that's called compliance reporting. And this is something that runs on the workstations and sort of lets us know when so when there's data there that should not be there and that amount is where did i put that uh sorry to bear with me sorry it's not that uh, okay that amount is 1500 for the year 1560 dollars and so those are the categories that make up these subscriptions and if you um add add two two thousand dollars to this because I believe that's what the web subscri uh, subscription currently costs. If it's not, you could adjust it. Uh, that's twelve hundred. Okay, so make it twelve hundred. Yeah, it's a hundred. It's a hundred dollars a month. Okay, uh, and so so we can back this down, and I'm ha and I'm I'll, I'll be happy with that. Anybody think we still have it wrong? Because crypto is not seven thousand. No, but he said crypto and other security. And other security. And then so yeah, some mail, other mail, other Sentinel. Character. I could name the products; they won't mean anything to you. Sentinel. I'm just line. saying. Wait, you wait. Both lines to update the seven thousand because the crypto added with the other should be for seven thousand. No, no, it's it's seven. It's it's seven. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's wrong. Is this wrong, Roy? Is this not in addition to the 7,000? Is that part of the 7,000? I'll tell you in a minute. Other security. 5,328 50, is other security. And, and the crypto, crypto is what? 1,620. Oh, and, and there's one last category that... Uh, then you should eliminate other security measures from that description. Yeah, I will, because, yes, I was trying to type as I heard. Yeah, right. So what's the last one, Roy? Okay, cloud backups, including MailAssure. I put MailAssure in there because half of it is for archiving, and the other half is uh, email delivery. And that is 450 a month times 12 is 5,400. And there you go. There's your, your complete picture. So you can see Comcast is a very significant uh, piece of it. Microsoft is, and then the security. This isn't real. This isn't, this is not my services here. These are just products that we buy or, um, or um, space that we buy for the backup, for the cloud backups, for example. And that's what it is. That's why it's under the subscriptions uh, category there. So if so, the 1200 isn't even in here. If you want to put it in there, you can. No, um, it is. It's right here for the website. Okay, there you go. Okay. So you can back that that category amount down to 27.9. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, that's looking a little better. And there, 
right. There you, there you go. You can't level fund this because because these are products that keep going up. It's not just, they go up in price. We have more data than ever before that we back up, and that costs money. So it'd be nice to just level fund it, but you can't. Now, are we under? Are we going to be underspending and equipment? Uh, I can honestly say, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I I hope not because um, workstation costs have come down significantly. Those little ones that you're using there, Veronique, they're they're really proving themselves in the field. Except for the one that one mishap that you had with uh, you know the the uh, speaker jack, I, I've got 25 of those machines out there and they're doing really well. So I haven't had yeah. any any issues. And that's- I would not go down on the equipment because I know we're gonna need some new equipment for the police department, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm Right, sure right, I'm trying to say, don't, yeah, don't go down there. And, but the, the, uh, the other side of it is laptops have not come down really. And this is why you had, didn't hear from me earlier today, Vernie, because I can't find one that I think is worthy. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so um, there you have it. Ask ask any more questions if you like. <laughs> oh, I want to mention one thing. If it push came to shove, and um, you wanted to see some dramatic service uh, savings, you could do away with Microsoft. Well. You can do away with part of Microsoft um, and use LibreOffice, but I don't think anybody really wants to do that because you will run into issues with formatting of the documents. But LibreOffice is for free, and then you would only need to, to spend um, enough for mail from Microsoft, which, you know, you could knock 2000 2, bucks off of that probably if you went to, to LibreOffice. But I'm not advocating that. It's just going to be a headache and counterproductive, I think. Do you have sense? any questions? Do you have any plans for how to tackle this increase in costs that it's going to keep incurring each year? I mean, if we're looking at the trend from 2018 to what we expect in 2024, it's a 50% increase each year. It's 300% more than in 2018. So obviously all of this is needed, but I, I just, I'm wondering if anybody here, since I'm still fresh, <laughs> if anyone here knows of any grants, anything that, can help out our town accommodate the absolutely insane increase in well security and, and software costs. Yeah, so I'm hoping when we get the, the draft and we go over that with Northeast IT, part of the um, goal, in my mind anyway, is to then, we'll, we'll know more about our system, but if they see any particular needs, work with Roy and then go after a grant to try to get some upgraded equipment or whatever, because I know that cybersecurity is a huge concern with the state. So they are, they do have money out there. Um, so community compact IT grant again. And our cost high, obviously Comcast is, is nothing to do with it because it's just what it is. But are the other costs high because we're an island where we're, all of this is for ourselves, you know, it, you can't, uh, like have a conglomerate with other towns where you're sharing the software packages and security packages. I assume that's no, really no, it wouldn't change. Uh, you know, unless, unless uh, you know, if the FERCOG decided that they were going to regionalize IT and uh, buy perhaps um, several thousand Microsoft licenses, you might shave a little bit of money off of there. But it's not a lot of money. And so it's not per user. 
it is per user. Let me just, okay, let me just briefly tell you the sad tale uh -huh. of when Conway had an IT position that we that we shared with the other three towns that were part of Frontier, and then Frontier had the bound. So the idea was this is Frontier's first IT person. Um, they were going to work half the week for Frontier mm -hmm. and then half the week split between the other four towns. The schools? And, yeah. Each, and so each person with each town would be entitled to the labor of the person in relation to the percentage of students. So we were entitled to 15% of the person's work. <laughs> yeah. I, the, the problem I mean, is, yes. <laughs> it, it, it's like, you know, it, it, life doesn't work that way. Right. When you need the person it was for like three days in a row, it messed everything up. And basically, from here, I had to hire like another person just to manage that person's time in the four towns. And then actually, that, that employee ended up actually, um, well, that just didn't end well. I mean, this Phil, is uh, Phil, uh, Phil yeah. didn't you, you yourself said uh, earlier that when you uh, go outside for it, you're going to spend three times as much? I, I totally believe that. The best, <laughs> the best thing we can do is to. And have Conway residents but, do these things like that. That is such a huge advantage. Yeah. All other things being equal, it's like that trumps a lot. <laughs> well, you gotta. You, I I would say that by this year here, we have again. If 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 the crypto stuff and the cybersecurity hadn't become first and for you know hadn't risen, bubbled to the surface. Um, you wouldn't have to spend this stuff, this money, and and have everybody be a pain in the neck, you know, logging into their PC. They got to look at their phone, or they got to look at uh, a, a little keychain thing. Um, but this is well, the. Work I mean, that that's true, Roy. But it's also true what Chris said is that if if over five years every department tripled tripled if, if it tripled the cost of every department, we we'd have to declare bankruptcy as a town. I mean, it's it's that's like not. That's, well, I, I mean, IT isn't IT isn't going to triple. And schools are doing that for years. Schools three this three percent a year. Um, but the percent, a little percent of a big number is a big number. Uh, but 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 the, the thing about like when, when when you look at the numbers over five years, the biggest driver of those costs is the software, and that 2018 the software and subscriptions is seven thousand dollars, six thousand spend. Now it's twenty nine thousand. Because that is, well, people that, became that's four times right. Well, first of all, people became more people became put on board with e with email. More people want to use Outlook. Uh, more people want to have the Microsoft suite, and um, and that goes for part time people as well as full time people. And yeah, maybe maybe we can get by without everybody. I mean, Outlook and just using Google Mail. Phil, so, you really can't. What you could do, I mean, if you really wanted to put a concerted effort, I mean, email is very specific, okay? And half, there was a time we ran our own mail server or we did not have Microsoft. And we moved to Microsoft for a very specific reason. Uh, and that is, they're Microsoft. And you're not going to lose email accounts because they're Microsoft. They may become unavailable, they may have issues or whatever, but it's going to be um, as reliable and dependable as, as you can sort of expect. And there's just no, you know, half of that Microsoft is, is email. And so you can't, you, you can't expect people to not have email. I, as I mentioned LibreOffice because it's a freebie, but you really, like I said, the city of Berlin went to LibreOffice, and over a number of years, they reverted back to Microsoft. They're all speaking German. Uh, well, it's because it's because it's Microsoft. It's a it's a monopoly. I mean, you know, it's, it's not even a, there's not even a duopoly. It's a a monopoly. And, and, the, one, and, the one thing I would say is that this as a department is very different from other town services because it is an emerging field, so to speak. I mean, if you look at our IT budget from probably 15 years ago, it would be zero. drastic. It was zero. Right, <laughs> right. And, and the other thing is that, you know, we're still getting cyber liability insurance through Maya, but I'm kind of expecting that unless we have a lot of these protocols in place, they may not cover us for the million dollars of 
for cyber threats. So I kind of look at it as money spent too. Right. right. And and so you know what? It's not even you don't want to have cyber. You you want to have tools in place so you never have to deal with it and you never have to make a claim. And so this is this is peanuts, really. If you if you had a serious problem where the town had to shut down for whatever amount of time, and so you know, and that's a whole other story because the if you want to have contingencies and bigger cities of uh, entities do have contingencies, then you run into, well, how long do you want it to take before you can recover and come back online? Do you want it to be a week? Do you want it to be two days? Do you want it to be one day? Or do you want it to be two hours? As you move that closer to immediacy, the costs skyrocket. So in the, John, you're shaking your head like you, you're aware of, I'm not, I, I assume I'm speaking stuff that people somewhere know. Okay, so I hope that's you. But it's, so the idea behind all this is to avoid it. And if you can't avoid it, then the idea is to contain it. So if God forbid somebody's machine is infected, it's going to shut down and we're going to know that it's infected and that it's not going to spread throughout the network and causing a big, big problem. Now, if I would be remiss, uh, if I were to say to you, those products that I've got in place, give us 100% assurance. They do not. They do not. They might give us 96% percent assurance there's always that four percent and there's always that uh uh thief if you will looking to find their way in the good news is we're a tiny little place and they have much uh more productive pickings hackings if you will elsewhere because they're not going to find a lot here <laughs> so so if they're if they're going to expend x amount of effort they'll uh, you know ver here versus somewhere else Chances are it'll be somewhere else, if unless it's just kids who don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> okay, so um, that's you know that's the good news. But Phil, there is no real good news in terms of uh, cutting costs in that area. I I would never ever recommend, and I might resign as a result if somebody somebody uh, insisted on cutting costs there. How's that? Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Thank you, Roy. Okay. I have a question Roy, regarding this grant. So grants that we might consider for the IT is that that covers only equipment, not software as equipment is not. You know what? I have to look into that more. I think it's mostly about beefing up your equipment. I don't think it's I think in other words, I think it's more about one time costs rather than operational. Okay. Is that's my understanding. Is it competitive or is it like it's competitive? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so can everybody see the transfer station spreadsheet? Online? Okay, great. Just want to make sure that when I switched sharing, everybody can still see it. Fully double digit, double digit percentage increase request, Batman. Mm -hmm. Well, you know why that is. Look at line 405 Springfield Murphy. Yep. If that had not been taken out, it would not be that big a job. So anyway, um, so I had a bunch of notes in the bottom, which I think you all have. I'm not sure the audience will be able to see them. If I make it smaller, you won't be able to see much. So I'll scroll down a little. Um, so this budget got split out, as you know, just in this fiscal year is the first fiscal year that we're tracking this as solely the transfer station. So the FY22 is what I extrapolated from the Board of Health budget from the year before. Mm -hmm. But this is the first year we're tracking what's going on, um, you know, uh, and seeing how things play out. I will tell you, um, well, first to get up to the um, hourly for the transfer station attendance, I wanted to mention <clears throat> that the select board had decided a number of years back that um, the attendants were gonna get a certain amount of sick time. 
Uh, what? Yeah, Phil, you would you would have been here when that was happening. It was a decision that was made that because of the number of hours they work, yeah, it was put into the personnel policy. Uh, no way. Absolutely. When the whole thing came down with sick time and yeah, mm -hmm. it was before my time, but I'm just telling you that, that that's been the policy. And it's an unusual position in that if somebody's sick, somebody still has to cover that person. So you're paying sick time. And you're paying, you're still paying the normal salary because you've got two people in the cover. Now it doesn't happen very often, but I just wanted to point that out. So I, I wanted to put a little bit of extra money in that line just to make sure that we can cover it. It's before my time, but it is, believe me, I yeah. How much how many hours per week does each does each person work? Uh, well, they so what was decided back then like all three weeks. Yeah. I know, but right. So they each put in the average about um, 24. So it's still over if you do 10. It was, it was employees who do 10 or more hours per week, I believe was the cutoff. And I want to say it changed like three or four years ago. Anyway, so most, I just wanted to- Most of these costs are the right side then we're looking at compost and that's the uh, infill compost for that, right? It's the it's a compost cooperative and it, yeah and it costs us fifty one hundred I'm uh, sorry five hundred ten for the radiant place scrap metal hole in the radiant place well actually the compost cooperative to be fair to them they're not raising their price we were just coming back online to composting because it had stopped during COVID I wasn't sure exactly how much to put in that budget last year now I know you know unless they go up again which you know I don't hopefully this they won't. It's, we do it through the through the Franklin County Solid Waste District. Well, so, yeah. And then the, the increase in the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, the admin, that's we that that's what we do too, right? Correct. Yeah. And Jan sends us the whole budget and shows yeah. us what our assessments are. So okay. if I haven't forwarded that, I'm, I'll be happy to. Um, so what well, else? The mark is the mark. You have to pay the throw. Yeah, so that was the thing. That's why it looks so bad because last year I had 15,000 in the budget. We decided to take it out. It was a gamble because we had not been paying up, you know, until probably I want to say it was this November, I think it started, maybe maybe a little earlier. Um, so now it just doesn't make any sense not to put that right back in because we're, you know, so you can see how much we paid already. Yeah. Um the line I want to point out is the 380, the contracted services, mm -hmm. because you can see how much it started here in 22, and they actually spent more than what was in there. But I brought it down, and this is all we've spent this year. So I'm gambling and taking it down to 10 grand because I don't find that I have that many contracted services. Um, as you saw, when we did the Board of Health budget, there were a couple of things I couldn't really tease out very well from what had been in there. So yeah. we like the dues and subscriptions and stuff. Same with this. So I'm just, I'll be tweaking that line for sure every year. The rest of them are pretty much, you know, all these numbers here, except for, um, uh, well, no, all of them actually. Those are all the cost of dealing with our, our trash. So this is how much it costs to haul and throw away the bulky waste. This is how much it costs just to haul the recycling. This is how much it costs per ton of trash. The hazardous waste collection, just we set the budget there. So that is a place where I probably could take it down. You look how much has been in there. Um, so, you know, if you want me to knock off from there, I'm happy to like go down to like, I don't know, maybe 4,500. I think that would. Yes. Okay. All right, we'll do that. That one, you know, like I said, the town sets it. Jan does not set it. Um, the only thing I don't know is we we do have a super site here in Conway, so I haven't gone through a whole year of expenses with the uh, because we collect paint and all that kind of stuff up here. So. And then there's that awful Murph fee that came back in, um, and the compost now reflects at least what we're paying now. 2022, this department, this we spent 153 thousand. Huh? Oh, uh-huh. I believe so. Um, the 15 was in there. But yeah. 
So that's a fifty thousand dollar increase in two years. That's the only thing is I don't really know how much of this, you know, a twenty five percent increase in two years. Yeah, that's twelve and a half percent increase per year. Yeah. Well, if we put mm -hmm. those are unkind arithmetic. Yeah. So the other fees keep going. It's the tariffs are going up more and more because we have to have pay more and more to have it disposed of and greater businesses and all. It's going to be a real problem. And we wonder why one third of the elderly people sit there. We wonder why all the elderly people say this is a crap place to grow old. And... I mean, honestly, I don't really see other than the hazardous waste. I don't see much else that that I you know I can yeah. cut out of there. And believe me, I'm happy to. I don't want my taxes to go up. <laughs> Sending out warning a couple of years, starting a couple of years ago, that no one expects to get You know, we get worse from here. China is a great crash. We have to spend a lot more money to dispose of it. The airplane is getting transportation costs a hundred thousand needs to be updated. No, that's that what it was. The, that's that what was, this was. Yeah, that's what that said. It was from FY. That was the dumping. Oh, I would like actual trash disposal. Oh, I would have been on this. Sure. So I'll keep looking at it as we get closer and closer to the end of the fiscal year. If I see any more places where I can cut, believe me, I will. Roy and uh, John, have you any questions, comments, suggest suggestions? Um, I just wanted a clarification. So in 2022, uh, 401, 402, we had no hauling fees in that year. Is that? Yeah, is that, that looks that really is? strange. I know because so what 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 I can't figure out how to reflect properly here. These were all actually in the Board of Health budget, and I had to pull out what they mm -hmm. had put in. Mm -hmm. I actually added a bunch of lines for this budget because right. I wanted us to be able to actually see what each of these materials cost us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So, so, yeah, okay. Built. I get it. So basically, so like four, 400, for example, includes trash hauling is just sort of a general, I see, catch-all category. Well, yeah. So in 22, it is. Right, right. And then includes, you broke it out. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay. No, I understand. Okay. And actually, if you look at this, 15,000 difference is pretty much level funded <laughs> in a way when you look at it, right? Yeah. From if we had had the 15,000 in here, let's see, I have to find that again. Look at that. So if the 15,000 had been in there, I've got a level funded budget. Yeah, but it wasn't. So you don't. That was fun. That was today's budget <laughs> highlights. <laughs> just enough to just enough to not want you to not want any more right now. Yeah, for now. Uh, so the the school committee is Thursday. Thursday. Wait. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So in the, in the budget will be being discussed. It is not the formal budget hearing yeah. because they don't have the revenue picture down. But um, it's a good, be a good intro to school budget. Here we go. So it's six p.m. at the grammar school. It has been posted as a joint meeting of finance and select just, just, just in case. case we get a more on the floor. Yeah. Well, I'll be there. Or do you think on that? Well, I make a motion to adjourn the finance committee portion of the select board. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All right. Adjourn. Uh, the, the next meeting, uh, the, the next, the next finance joint committee with select board is going to be Tuesday the twenty first. Tuesday the twentieth is a holiday. Tuesday the twenty first, on Monday the twenty first.
Thank you. Okay, everybody. Thank, thank you very you. much. Good thank night. you, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. One word. One word. Select word. Soldiers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the warrants. The warrants. Uh, got accounts payable warrants. Amount of one hundred twenty-six thousand nine hundred eighty-five dollars thirty-seven cents payroll warrant for the amount of one hundred eighteen thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars forty-three cents payroll deduction warrant the amount of twenty-nine thousand two hundred forty-seven dollars and thirty-four cents. I went through all of those and signed them already. I did, did have some questions when we could talk about some items, but everything's expensive. <laughs> Uh, but all is all is in order, and so I'm going to make a motion that we approve the warrants. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Um, meetings attended by select board members. Yeah. Uh, transfer station. Yeah, we all we all were we all had a transfer station. That's it for me. <laughs> meeting, which um, I have been receiving feedback from people about almost every day. Um, most of it was pretty good. <laughs> you, you don't get unanimity unanimity anymore. No. But um, you know, so I, I appreciated the people that were just grateful that there was no real screaming and shouting. Appreciate people that said that they were um, you know, that 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 they thought that we, that that it was handled well. So yeah. It was well attended. There was 20 people there. 20 residents came in for it. I think that was pretty good. Yeah. Well, just to read from my update, it's it's been posted online yes. already. And I looked at it earlier. It was already up to 93 views. So a lot of people are watching it at home who yes. are not able to make it. Yes. Good. And um, yeah. Yeah. So today, a couple, a couple I saw on the road, they, 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 they both felt really differently about it. They are <laughs> like the transfer station does that; it causes arguments. It does. <laughs> when one spouse makes the other one throw something away against their will, and then there's a whole set of rules that get attached to that. If you if you get something from that comedy mall, you have to put something back too. Um, so, all right. Uh, any public comments? Any unfinished business? Items not anticipated in 48 hours. Kind of administrator did, update. Did you want to? I did have on the agenda review and discussion of the transfer station form. Did you want to talk any more about it or, you know, how you felt about it or next steps or anything like that? We were going to have more than one forum, right? I think I'd prefer to, to wait in public forum. February is a tough month for people to get out of their house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, maybe not this month, but, you know, next month or, I mean, we are going to have more than one public forum, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I think I'd prefer to do like the postmortem, you know, at the end of, at the end of all the sessions. Yeah, I'm hoping we'll get more comments, more feedback um, that we can utilize for the next forum. So, um, yeah, and I think I mentioned I'd like us to put together, I think it'd be helpful anyway, frequently asked questions and take a lot of it from what came about at the forum and answer them and put them, you know, on the select board page and we can go from there. But so you want to just wait to decide when you're going to have a, a next forum? Yes. Okay, great. And then we can all, you know, during our meetings, maybe talk about what should, how that forum should play out. If it should be similar to the last one, what questions we might want to raise? Might want to ask how much do you think our decal should be? Stuff like that. So I'll just keep adding, like, you know, add discussion of next transfer station form to the next few agendas. Right. So you guys, okay, great. And it was very helpful having Jan there. If we could just keep in touch with her, I think having her again would be a good idea.
Okay. Um, uh, no, <laughs> I'm happy to read it out loud, but it's already posted online. So if anybody is, you know, we need to get another grant. Just let people know for <laughs> the people going to be really thrilled with doing the, the email one again, where you have to learn how to not do phishing. But since that's the number one way hackers get in, I thought it was important to do at least another round. Just get even better at ignoring bot generated requests. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then just that you and I had submitted for the second or another round of opioid funds. Yes, grant, not opioids. Grants to combat opioid use. I said opioid funds is what I said. <laughs> we submitted for some opioids is what you said. Oh, so, yeah. and the amounts are pretty big. I mean, it's over a lot of years, but they're from five different new yeah. ones. And, you know, it adds up. It does. And we're going to be able to do at least the deep river layer. And that's, that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, anything else? The uh, next meeting is Tuesday, February 21st, 6 p.m. But before then, there is, um, we did, there is an agenda for a select board meeting at the grammar school on the 16th, just in case there's a form. Mm -hmm. At six o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. It is not required. It is not required. It's the school budget at the grammar school Thursday at six. Um, with that, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good job, Erica, thank you. Thanks, everyone.